They're chatting, or, you know, it's it, like the Japanese crew would stay, they keep completely still until they're required, you know. Just exactly what I like, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to camera with the uh, sword. What am I doing? Just turn, pull it and draw it, and just look menacing. Okay, here's the shot, right? Ready? I've got my left hand. How about this? If you have a full length figure, yeah. like that, it's mysterious, you know, and it's me, you know, it's me. Okay. Do that, my angel. Okay, Dad. Great. Rolling. Is that all right? Well, I think that uh, Dad, in a way, is a little bit like um, Merlin in, Ex in, a, in Excalibur. When Merlin says, sometimes a dream, sometimes a nightmare. I always identify with Merlin because Merlin, what does he represent? Magic. And what the move is about magic. And, you know, you sit back, you think, well, somehow you've made this thing and there's a kind of satisfaction in that. I think the darkness of Dad is, and, is, and his secrecy all goes back to his childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, what had a profound effect on me was the, my mother's, you know, affair. Unconsciously, that situation has occurred in my films. For instance, in Point Blank, it's about this man, played by Lee Marvin, who's betrayed by his wife, goes off with his best friend. Again, that triangle, it's Arthur, Lancelot and Guinevere. My father and his best friend, Herbert, uh, were both wooing my mother. She favoured Herbert, but my father had a job and Herbert didn't. <laughs> she married my father really out of a kind of proxy, in a sense, because he, he married the man she loved, his best friend. My father went off into the army and Herbert didn't. My mother went to work for him and they were together a lot. Finally reconciled with the man that she, she loved. I liked him very much. In fact, in some ways, I preferred him to my father. But, I, but, in the, the, but I suppose it was a dilemma for me. In, in, you know, I was either betraying my father or betraying my mother. It was a choice, in a sense. You know, my father was a disappointed man, in a way, because of the presence of this lover who was sort of always there, and somehow he felt it, and that... And I was somehow um, a rival for my mother's affections. So he wanted me to succeed where he had failed. And at the same time, he also wanted me to fail. So there was a terrible strain there between those two things. I mean, was your mother somebody you could talk to, your sisters? I mean, who did you... Was there anybody you confided in as a child? Or no, spoke with? I never did confide in anybody. So, and, and this is something that obviously carried through your life? Yeah. I think that... Um, uh, Yes, I think it did, yeah. This is all stuff I'm working on here, all right. these scripts and things here like that. And then, um, you know, my, my bookshelves are all full. Yeah. I mean, there's no more room on my bookshelves for any more books, and there's probably no more room in my mind and memory, because that's what happens when you... Become senile, you can, uh, you've used up all your memory. There's nowhere left to go. Uh, 
I've got a little bit left. I always loved, um, uh, Blake. There was a time when I did read nothing else but Blake. What was that? His, this whole vision of uh, a kind of um, England, uh, it, it was very, um, had a huge impression on me. Um, the Sick Rose. A rose thou art sick, the invisible worm that flies in the night in the howling storm has found out thy bed of crimson joy, and in his dark secret love does thy life destroy. Does that make you think of, um, makes me think of, um, Tulsa? Makes me think of a beautiful young woman taking her... Yes, well, that's what it's about. It's, uh, you know, in this, uh, it, you know, every something beauty in nature has within it the worm of of death, you know, that's the nature of life. And, uh... Where's Telsha's tree? There. There. So you planted that, wouldn't you, that, um... yeah. We had a ceremony here. All the village came and everything. And Telsha, my sister, and Dad planted this when she died, just after she died. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. So it's been there 11 been, years. 11 years. It was about this high when he went in. Amazing. So it's grown. What was your relationship like with her? Well, it was very, very special. And you know, there was this occasion when she was, before she was one year old, she walked very early and she was, um, she fell into a pond face down and and uh, uh, your mother found her and she couldn't do anything she was so she just collapsed I heard this wail and I ran out to the garden and there she was lying and I took her out and she there was no uh, pulse no heartbeat she was just white dead and I, this was the time, it was before, it was before mouth-to-mouth um, -mouth resuscitation was widely known. And I'd read in, uh, in, in, I just glanced at it in a newspaper. And I, just in, like an illustration, I didn't even read the article. And suddenly, it, it, it just appeared before my eyes. And I read it. And that's the extraordinary thing. I hadn't read it at the time. But when I, it appeared in front of me, I looked at it and it told me how to do it. And I gave her mouth to mouth and she started to breathe. There were four of us, Telsha being the eldest. Uh, she would have been 49 this year and she died in 1996 of cancer. And you think of your children and you see the two of them together and then your heart breaks when you think about that. Well, there is no way of coping with it. I mean, you, you, part of you dies with the child. And, um... I, I miss Tasha every day and, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, and I remember on the long way round, I think she was with me every step of the way she was in there, I definitely felt her on my shoulder. She died 12 years ago and that just, there was a kind of moment where the whole family just collapsed. I think it changes, doesn't it, the dynamic of the family afterwards because yes. there's somebody missing and there's always yes. this feeling of someone missing. Tasha always said, oh, um, that my mother and father both gave birth to me. <laughs> and, and it was an extraordinary thing and I, I, I think that mm, made a, a bond between us, which was um, so extraordinarily close and complex. And she was very much the working arm of Dad. You know, she wrote, did second unit and co-directed with him. 
I suppose, living in Paris. But then she was so wonderful with you. You two were absolutely, it together went really. Mm. Yeah, and I always felt that that was the serious thing that you lost her. It was unimaginable that Talsha could die. Um, I think of her every single day, and she always helps me from above, because I always think of her laughing, or how she would joke, or what she would say to, to in, in a difficult situation, what would mm. Talsha do? And she, so I feel that she always helps me out. She and I were doing comedy live on French TV every week, do you remember? Yeah. And we used to kind of write the sketches, and we were the Borman sisters on a kind of family show that was comedy. Venez les garçons. Allez, on va les rejoindre. Venez, venez avec nous rejoindre. Alors, ça va? Looking back, I think maybe that was destiny. Maybe it was meant to be that we it had this. It was meant to be, maybe. That we would have the child. With Telsha. With Telsha. Before she, she died. With us, yeah. mm. And sometimes, I, with the phone rings, and for a second, I think, oh, it's Telsha. I love this, don't you? Look at the small ones Put it on the front. Well, she was so special, wasn't she? And yeah. Everyone, and so loved. Um, uh, remember, <clears throat> at the funeral, there must have been a hundred people there who, who thought they were her best friend. <laughs> well, the, the, that, she was their best friend. Yeah. Best friend. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, I mean, you know, I always had just a very special relationship with her. Yeah. I remember once when she was about 12 and she said to me, Dad, Dad, which of us do you love best? And which of the four? And I said, I love you all the same. You know, when you arrived, I loved you dearly. And then when Katrina arrived, I loved her. And it's, it's not, love is not something that you can measure exactly in that way. Yes, she said, it must be one of us. Just you love just a bit more, you know. She knew it was her. Anyway. <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. And she said, well, I said, look, Tasha, if I tell you which one it is, I want you to swear to me that you'll never mention it to a living soul. So I swear, I swear. I said, Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> she so knew that wasn't true. <laughs> But she's in good company here. The Stendhal is here, isn't he? Yes. Truffaut. Yes. And... The leader, the what? showgirl singer. <laughs> 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 Discover everybody at the table and then straight into it. Okay. That's 